Hey folks, it's Rena Jadav here with Dr. Joel Kahn in the house talking about the weekly health buzz. All right, Dr. Joel, how are you? I'm great. And we got some exciting topics to give people some input on what they're going to do this week. There we are. We're looking at the, uh, the Khan Chronicles report, which summarizes all the great stuff that's happened this week. Let's start with something that I got real excited about, which is reversal of clogged arteries. Is yeah, it? Well, I think, give that a click. That's probably what I focus on more in my office than anything. The idea that um, we do develop clogged arteries in the Western world, it's not just the United States but there is science going back 60, 70 years. And if you've got clogged arteries, one, you can detect it way early. You don't want to wait to your Bernie Sanders in an emergency room having a heart attack and stents. You want to find out 10 or 20 years or hopefully at least one or two years before. So there's all that about advanced testing. We'll talk about some other time. But then if you just go through this list, there's a long list of science-based approaches from the very well-known statin medication to the very well researched plant based nutrition, eating fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, and their ability to reverse heart disease. How about aged odorless garlic, a science based approach studied mainly at the University of California, Los Angeles, as a way to reverse heart disease? And not just the vampires that wear garlic, right. heart patients should too. Pomegranates have been studied in Israel as the whole fruit or the uh, unsweetened juice. And they show the ability to change your cholesterol and decrease blockage in arteries. Uh, chelation is an old technique that's coming back. The idea we can magically remove plaque from arteries. And then we get to some of the more obscure uh, agents. Like uh, my favorite is down there at the bottom, bergamot, mm. a lemon-looking citrus from southern Italy, Calabria, that has some pretty cool human data that it can help reverse plaque in arteries. And vitamin E. The last one down there is a very interesting antioxidant called pycnogenol, right there. Pycnogenol comes from the bark of French maritime pine trees uh, found by the water. And there's, it's a powerful antioxidant from nature. Everything's from nature uh, that works well. And it turns out there's some very impressive data. And as it says, there are 391 patients. That's a pretty big medical study. And the power of pycnogenol to help reverse plaque and arteries. So these are things I use in my office. It's mainly to give hope to people that you have control by your lifestyle. But even this is beyond lifestyle. This is some prescription and some non-prescription approaches. Uh, if you had to do one thing, start eating healthy right now. More fruits, more vegetables, more whole grains if you're not a celiac. And quinoa would be an example if you are. And more legumes, beans, peas, lentils. Get your food from plants. You have a good chance of preventing and reversing cardiovascular disease. I love it because as you keep reminding us over and over again, it's the number one killer out there. It's the main right. reason most of us die. And what a simple, elegant solution to not dying before our time. Oh my God, we lost somebody last week from the Food Network, 44-year-old Food Network reporter. Oh Famous God. for carrying trays of grilled meat, cheeses, butter, you know, happily claiming he never eats a vegetable. I mean, I'm not going to, it's so sad. I don't want to make any light because his family's suffering, but dead of a heart attack at age 44. Oh, it's awful. It's so awful because it's preventable. Let's get back to. Oh, Con Chronicle. Where'd it go? Yeah. So let's get back to the baseline here. Okay. Next very exciting news was. Yeah, we were talking about seeds and blood pressure. Yeah. Over there, that beautiful bowl of, it looks like, unground flaxseed. Yes. You know, high blood pressure, it's a challenge. It's asymptomatic, meaning you can have a blood pressure 180 over 120 and not know it, not feel bad. You might feel bad, but you might not. And it's the number one killer. We say cardiovascular disease is the number one killer, but blood pressure is a cardiovascular disease. It actually is the number one killer worldwide, uh, more than any other cause of death. So we need to wrap our uh, lifestyle around it. And there's always medication, but how about two tablespoons a day of ground flaxseed? 
So we don't make this stuff up. These are actually studied. It says there, Journal of Nutrition, mm -hmm. 2015. They took two tablespoons of ground flaxseed or um, other agents that looked and taste somewhat similar. And there is a drop in blood pressure by two tablespoons of ground flaxseed. Now, if those of you haven't had ground flaxseed, tastes nutty, it's pleasant. You put it in oatmeal, put it on salad, put it in soups. Um, you can just eat it, although that'd be a little chewy, but you can, it's safe. And it turns out it's so rich in fiber, magnesium, and omega-3 precursors. And it lowers blood pressure like a drug. So I'd much rather take two tablespoons of ground flaxseed, have better GI health as a side effect, than take drugs and potentially have leg cramps and uh, other problems, cough as a side effect. So it goes down a little lower there that there are other natural foods, lower blood pressure. Aged odorless garlic is one of the best. The black garlic you mentioned, cardamom, a spice, of course, it ends up in curry. Uh, uh, plant or dairy uh, yogurts, green tea. So there are natural ways. One of my favorite not listed there is hibiscus tea. A little challenging to find hibiscus tea in tea bags, loose. Um, I like crystalline hibiscus tea I can source from California. But uh, hibiscus tea lowers blood pressure like ground flaxseed. And that's what my patients do. They have two tablespoons a day of ground flaxseed, two cups a day of hibiscus tea, and very often they can avoid medication and sometimes they can even get off and reduce medication. Cool, cool stuff. I love it. By the way, in the bergamot study, I don't know if you're aware, but that's what Earl Grey tea is. Right, right, so right, right. I am a big, big fan of bergamot, cholesterol, blood sugar, blood pressure, antioxidant, and absolutely Earl Grey tea, uh, black teas, green teas, although, uh, in, at least in some of the science, hibiscus tea has a special status for its rich, rich antioxidant status. Let's I go down it. a little. Yeah, I think we were, uh, we were talking about quinoa there, those three bowls there. Yeah. Quinoa, I mean, should you fear grains or should you eat grains? Well, a few people clearly have celiac disease and a few people have gluten sensitivity and 100% whole grains and Ezekiel bread isn't gonna work for them. But you don't wanna miss out on those grains because of healthy fiber. We say we have to feed uh, you know, many trillions of cells in our body, but we have to feed even more bacteria in our body. We have to think about feeding them and feeding our bacteria candy bars and ice cream is not a really good idea or antibiotics, but feeding our bacteria whole food, fiber-rich uh, choices like quinoa is a real good one. So quinoa has fiber, quinoa is a whole grain, quinoa is gluten-free, quinoa is very high in protein and has all those essential amino acids, so kind of a bit like soy, tofu. Quinoa is another natural food that you never need to worry about protein intake, although you really don't need to if you're eating a whole food diet. So. Yes, quinoa gets, there's red quinoa, there's standard quinoa, it's tasty, you can use it for breakfast, you can use it uh, in a salad, in a soup, and uh, if you've never cooked it before, play a lot with quinoa. Uh, we say it's the only food on an ingredient list that you can't pronounce, but you still can eat. Uh, all those chemical names that you can't pronounce, don't eat them. Absolutely, now the one tip that I will give on quinoa is soak it at night, rinse really, really well in the morning, and then cook it. Good idea. You wanna have, anytime you're dealing with seeds, whether it's chia or flax or, or quinoa, to the extent possible, you wanna soak it in hot water at night, wash it really, really well in the morning before you cook it. Um, we Indians love cooking our food in pressure cooker, and that's yeah. because it, of course, busts open that outer layer, which can potentially cause uh, irritation to some yeah. folks. Yeah. So, Any concern about lectins, which most of us don't need yeah. to worry about, uh, that might be found in beans, peas, lentils, some grains. Just soak your food and pressure cook it, and you've uh, taken care of any possible so-called anti-nutrient effect. Exactly. And it seems like I got blasted everywhere on my Con Chronicle from various different sources. A new study on cheese and yeah. prostate cancer. Of course, yeah. we're only speaking to half of the population when we're talking about prostate health. But you know, one, out of, about, nine, Dr. one those... out of every nine men. Uh-oh, we're way, one out of every nine men get prostate cancer, and 
It can be disabling, it can be sexually impairing, and it can be lethal too. And it turns out in this large study from the Mayo Clinic um, that uh, 47 studies combined, more dairy, a relationship was identified, more prostate cancer. Um, this is called a meta-analysis. This is like really not a brand new study, but it's lumping all the studies out there to give it more power. And this is also called an association study. Doesn't absolutely prove the fact, but there's plenty of reasons why that might be the case. Partly if you're buying conventional dairy, there might be hormones and antibiotics and estrogen right in the milk and the cheese and the yogurt. But, uh, and yogurt may be a little different. Fermented dairy may be a little different uh, than just cheese. But anyways, um, the other is that uh, dairy may contain something called IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor one. It's something we need as a child to grow up. It's something a baby cow needs to grow up to a full cow. But it's not something as an adult we necessarily want a high level of. And dairy may have an, the ability to raise IGF-1. And although this study is focused on men and prostate cancer, you can find very similar data for females in breast cancer uh, and dairy. So if you're a dairy person, uh, limited, look at the many, many plant-based substitutes uh, for milk and cheese and butter, and, uh, yogurts that are out there that have no cow-based estrogen or cow-based IGF-1, uh, and see if you like them. There's so many good ones. I have a brand new one I've never had, a onion uh, kind of sour cream dip, but it's all made from almonds, a company called Kite Hill, and it's, I haven't had a uh, sour cream onion dip in about 40 years, so I tried it this week. I said, whoa, I can remember how good this was with a nice kind of celery or carrot. Still very calorie rich, so it's going to be a treat, but pretty good. Guy Hill's an amazing brand. I love it. I love their yogurts. I love all the stuff that they put out. Um, you know, the one thing around milks is sort of the whole, all of us who've been dairy free and are looking at picking up bottles of nut milks. And when I say milk, I mean M-Y-L-K, not M-I-L-K. Uh, Dr. Khan, one of the challenges <laughs> is when you, when you flip around and look at the ingredients, there's a lot of crap in there. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have a favorite brand for yeah. alternative milk? So one, it's pretty easy to make it at home. There actually is on my website, a little device called the Almond Cow. And it's literally just a grinder, but it's very well constructed. You put almonds in the middle with water. Two minutes later, you have almond milk and the rest is an easy cleanup. And it's something that's quite easy to do. There are big expensive machines. This is a relatively cost-effective one. And in fact, compared to buying store-bought almond milk, probably in a few months you've got your investment back, if you don't mind a little bit of uh, work in the kitchen. Um, yeah, I'm looking for organic. I'm looking for carrageenan, or some people pronounce it carrageenan-free. Um, I don't want added sugar. I'm usually buying unsweetened uh, plant milks. Um, some of them are very rich in sugars added. Uh, certainly, if you're buying chocolate, plant milk should basically doing a little bit better than chocolate milk, but you just, none of us need the added sugar. Children don't need the added sugar. So, you know, get some cacao powder, cocoa powder, put it in your milk and make your own if you really want a little chocolate flavor. So, yeah, I think it's good to be picky. Uh, you know, if you're older, you want a little more protein. So I prefer the pea protein milks like Ripple, mm. the soy milks, if there's no reason not to. Most of us can enjoy soy organic milks, they're very high in protein. Something like rice milk, that's kind of fallen off the map. It used to be so popular. There's nothing but pretty much thin white water with rice milk. But uh, if you're making a latte, try oat milk, try Oatly. It's amazing for cappuccinos and espressos. It's very popular in the coffee shops. It really foams up just like 100% uh, whole milk, but uh, you don't get any of the antibiotics or hormones with it. Exactly. Exactly. I personally love macadamia milk. Or yeah, that's nice. Milk. Yeah, I agree. Those are my two new uh, yeah. splurges. Hazelnut milk I make at home. You just soak it at night, 10 yeah. hazelnuts, and blend it in the morning. And it's yeah. just absolutely delicious. It's like My a new favorite is actually hemp milk. Uh, hemp, as everybody you know, may be aware, uh, a plant that can be made into some recreational uh, items and also food and clothing. But it's uh, very high in omega-3. So... It's hard if you're not eating fish to get enough omega-3 and leafy greens, walnuts, uh, ground flaxseed, ground chia seed, ground hemp. 
Uh, but anyways, uh, hemp milk is a very rich, lovely milk uh, with a lot of precursor to help you build omega-3 in your body. Good stuff. All right. Well, I'm getting hungry, so I'm going to ah. go, go make some. Yeah, we um, went from reversing heart disease to making <laughs> cappuccinos and lattes. Uh. Exactly, exactly. So this is an awesome weekly buzz. Um, Dr. Khan, thank you so much. Any, any last parting words before we wrap up? You're the captain of your health. Don't outsource your food to other people. Take back your food into your own hands and uh, teach your family the same. You know, maybe one meal this week and make in your kitchen. Uh, we're redoing our kitchen now, and I say, you know, we got to use this now. We got we to gotta not just use this to pile of books and mail. We got to cook. So I've been cooking a bit this week, which has been fun to get back in the kitchen. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much again. And for the rest of you, stay smiling. We'll see you next week on the Weekly Buzz with Dr. Khan.